Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. I am Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in beautiful Kerrville, Texas. Today's question, dear pastor, I'm watching your video, Saved by Grace or Works or Both, and you brought up short-term mission trips and you said, don't get me started on those. Well, I'd like to get you started, ha ha. I haven't found a video talking about it, so I'd like to ask you why you don't like them. Well, first of all, thanks for watching that video, and second, thanks for the question. It's, it's not that I don't like short-term mission trips, and, and it's not that I think they're necessarily a bad thing. My problem with short-term mission trips is that too often people do them in the wrong way or they go with the wrong attitude. It, both result in unintended consequences that are harmful to the communities that they're attempting to serve. So let's unpack this a little bit more. Uh, well, the wrong way, let's talk about that first. The wrong way of planning a short-term mission trip um, begins with planning and executing the project without working with and through an entity on the ground that actually knows the cultural context. Uh, this could be a, a long-term missionary, a church body, local church leaders, or some sort of cultural insider. You know, if a church or a group simply decides they're going to go someplace and do something that they think will be helpful for a certain community uh, without consulting the people that actually live in that community uh, and that culture, they're going to run a high risk of doing more harm than good. The project may look real good on paper, but without consulting the long-term presence on the ground, uh, that project runs the risk of creating more problems than it solves. So for instance, uh, if a group of Westerners goes to a third world country, let's say in Africa, and builds a house for a family, that obviously helps that one family. What isn't necessarily obvious is that it hurts the local man who builds homes for a living. He's now lost business, which he needed in order to support his family. Another potential repercussion is that due to uh, the short-term uh, do the free labor that the short-term missionaries have provided, that may drive down the cost of labor in that area, further hurting that house builder. And then uh, to add to this, if the short-term missionaries brought their own materials with them, that then hurts the local economy in other ways. So was that project helpful? Yeah. Did it harm the community? Yeah. That's one pitfall. Another pitfall of short-term mission trips is that Sometimes the projects are done in such a way that they just aren't sustainable for the local community. For instance, uh, a friend of mine who served as a Bible translator in Cameroon told me a story about a dilapidated bridge in his area. The bridge, he was told, was built by short-term missionaries. They brought in material, they built the bridge themselves. But since the local peoples didn't have any responsibility or ownership in the bridge's construction, then it fell into disrepair and was unusable. Uh, the local populace didn't fix it because they didn't have the money for materials or for labor, so they simply waited on the next group of short-term missionaries to arrive someday in the future with materials and labors to fix the bridge. Again, whenever that may be. So when it comes to building houses, churches, bridges, waterworks, those sorts of things, uh, something that's gotta be considered is the ongoing maintenance and upkeep of those projects. Short-term mission planners, they don't know the local culture, the people, the economy. Uh, and these examples, you know, that, that example, that demonstrates how short-term missions, if done poorly, creates an attitude of dependency among the people that are being served. You know, if it's something that uh, people can do for themselves, then they need to do it. You know, with the exception of emergency relief, short-term missionaries should do things with the local populace rather than for the local populace. Uh, you know, every short-term mission group needs to ask themselves a couple of questions. First, is this project truly helpful to the uh, area, to the, to the people, uh, to the community? And then two, are we working with the community so that they have ownership of the project as well as the ability to maintain it into the future? Approaching the project from the point of view of the local populace that you're going to serve, that is gonna go a long way in preventing dilapidated bridges and uh, ditches dug that the next short-term mission group will fill in. The best way 
to approach short-term missions uh, is uh, it, the best way is to have the right mindset. And part of that mindset requires humility, the humility to admit that the people that live there know what they truly need. You know, the project really needs to be initiated by the people on the ground, uh, not the people from far away. The attitude of, you know, we know best on the part of the uh, uh, short-term missionaries, that has to be jettisoned entirely because it's unhelpful. It's a, it's a harmful attitude. The right mindset then is going to be humble about that, and it's also going to take a holistic approach to the community uh, so that it, it does everything within its power to minimize those unintended consequences of their work and time there. The right approach to short-term missions also includes that the participants be honest with themselves about as far as the reasons they're going. And now, now I have no doubt uh, that participants in short-term missions honestly want to help others and they honestly want to share the gospel. But first of all, that has to be acknowledged that that can be done and should be done in one's own community. You, know, you don't need to go to Africa or the inner city to help your neighbor and confess the faith. Ultimately, the participants need to understand that they're going for themselves. The short-term mission trip, it's a learning experience. You're not going there to change the world. You're going to learn. You're going to uh, expand your worldview. You're going there for personal growth. And that's not a bad thing. You know, lots of good, in fact, can come from short-term mission trips. Um, for some, time in the mission field can awaken their desire to become long-term missionaries themselves. For others, uh, it can fan into flame the desire uh, to love their neighbors and spread the gospels in their own communities, to confess the faith back home. Uh, for others, it may inspire them to become financial supporters of long-term missionaries. And for others, the trip may just give them a better appreciation of the stuff that God has given them back home, of all the many blessings that he gives them. So a short-term uh, mission trip in that sense, it, it can be very beneficial. You know, a short-term mission trip uh, to the inner city of Minneapolis when I was in high school, it set me on the trajectory uh, to serve in the inner city during my seminary years and then briefly in my first parish. So all this is to say uh, that there are benefits to going on short-term mission trips. Uh, and in most cases, the participants benefit more than uh, the people being served. Another aspect of that right mindset uh, is the ultimate goal of the trip. That's something that also needs to be considered. The goal isn't necessarily to speak the gospel to someone who's never heard it in a lot of these cases. Um, the goal is not necessarily to convert anyone. Now, if the Holy Spirit gives that opportunity to confess the faith, then yeah, by all means, take it. But the ultimate goal is to remove possible barriers to the faith. And when we keep that in mind, uh, I think that, that, that's part of that humble, correct, godly attitude in going into a short-term mission trip. Something else to keep in mind uh, about these is that the presence of short-term missionaries that disrupts the local culture. You know, it creates a little mini culture within itself. So you don't get the uh, indigenous culture 100% undiluted because the indigenous culture you know, puts itself on hold while the new element is there at present. Uh, for instance, in many places, hospitality is a big deal and it's the host's responsibility to please their guests. And many will do this even to the point of affirming the work's group, the, the, I'm sorry, the, the group's work, there we go, as helpful, even if it's not. Uh, so a short-term mission trip you know, isn't necessarily a, a complete cultural immersion. You know, it takes years uh, for long-term missionaries to understand a foreign culture and to build trust with the community that they're serving. So you're not going to understand a new culture in a week or two, uh, especially since the local culture is simultaneously adapting to your presence there. So that, that's just something you're not going to change. It's just something to be aware of. So bottom line. Are short-term mission trips a good idea? It depends. Two things you got that, that you got to consider that need to happen in order for a short-term mission trip to be beneficial to the community you're serving uh, is first, the trip's got to be planned with and through that long-term ministry presence on the ground, whether it's long-term missionary, church leader, or the like. That's going to ensure that uh, the need that the, the short-term missionaries are filling is an actual need um, and that can be filled in a way that doesn't harm the community. Uh, or create dependency. Second, got to have that humble attitude in the participants, uh, understanding that you're going for yourself, you're going to learn, to grow, to expand that worldview, and humbly serve your neighbor. I think if those two things are right, 
short-term mission trips can be a huge blessing uh, for everybody involved. Thanks for asking. Uh, I'm glad you got me started on that. If you have any other questions, make sure and email me atplacross at gmail.com. We'll put your question in the queue and we'll get to you as soon as we can. Until next time, God bless.